All right, let's go around the room and we will look at these. Uh, we'll start over here with you. Aaron, what'd you come up with for this in centimeters? 4.5. Did anyone have a different guess? That was pretty much the same. How about in millimeters? What did you call it, Justine? 4.49. So, which is more precise, the centimeters or the millimeters, McKaylee? Millimeters is correct because we get more digits. So, the more markings we have when we're reading between the lines, the more precise we are with more digits. Okay, let's look at the next one, uh, Reagan. Okay, 0 0.7, and did you put a unit on there? Meters, because it's a meter ruler. What's that same thing look like, well, this one in centimeters, Ryan? 6.2 centimeters. In chemistry, we usually have units with our numbers. There's only a few times in chemistry that we don't have units in our numbers. And how about the millimeter ruler, Alex? Okay, is it 90? Because here's a marking of 90, and then the next one is a tenth. So how many digits can we get? Did you all have 90? Really? 89.9 .9 was another option. Did anybody have anything different? Okay, if we look really closely at this ruler, what's the smallest marking on there, here? They're tenths. So, if we read one more digit than the markings on there, we have to go out past the tenths. So, we look at this carefully, and when you look at it closely, what's your best guess? Is it between 89.9 and 90, or is it between 90 and 90.1? What's your best guess? Jason, you want to take a stab at it? 9.8. And then we attach a unit, millimeters. So when we are looking, if somebody had read this as 90.00, would that be okay too? Sure it would, because we are estimating. It's really hard to tell what's in between there. So you might have had 89.98, 89.99, or 90.00, because it's all the digits we're sure of and we're estimating. And if we estimate this and it's really a little lower, that would bring us down closer to this measurement. Okay, uh, let's go to the graduated cylinders. To you, Michael. Just 25? Okay, so I've got 20 and 30, and I have markings of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if my smallest markings are 1, what do I have to do? 0.1 or something. So does that look like 25.1 to you? Yeah? Okay, so 25.1. And then we would have this, and it's in milliliters. How about the next one um, to you, Christian? 36.8 what? Milliliters. Riley? How would you read C? And D to you, Chad. Okay, 14.9. Did everybody get something very close to that? 
Did anybody have 14.8 or 15.0? Because if you did estimate a little bit differently, that's still okay. What you're going to see when we're dealing with measurements, it's all the digits that we're sure of and one with some uncertainty. So you may have a different answer than one of your neighbors or you may have a slightly different answer than I do and it will still be okay on the quiz or test. So when we start looking at these, we use our calculators and they show a lot of digits when you do a calculation. And it is your job as a chemistry student or a science professional as you move on from here to decide correctly how many of those digits we can report using the rules for significant digits. So we ask ourselves, what is a significant digit? Well, a significant digit is one that tells us how accurately and precisely we can measure. And we have to be able to tell when a digit is written down on the paper whether or not it is significant. So we have a set of rules to follow, and some of them are pretty straightforward, and one of them causes a lot of confusion on a regular basis for my students. So the first four are pretty straightforward. If we have the digit 1 through 9 and we write it down on the paper, it is always significant. That second rule is a mistake on the thing. It makes no sense. A zero is significant if it is between two non-zero digits. Sorry about that. That's an example of my poor typing skills. I'm pretty good at chemistry. I'm pretty lousy at typing. It's kind of the story of my life. When I was in high school, I had to go visit the guidance counselor to find out what was next in my life. And the counselor took one look at me and said, well, I don't know what you're planning, but you need to start doing something with your hair and your nails. Okay, that never caught on for me. I said, why is that? He said, well, you have to do that until or in case. Now, you've got to remember, this was in the 1960s. The world was different then, for women especially. He said, yeah, you need to look nice until you find a husband or in case something happens to him. So... Um, so I was supposed to do my hair and nails to find the husband and learn to type in case. And I took a typing class and I was terrible at it. That was a typing class, not a keyboarding class. You know, type and then move the carriage on the typewriter. And so I got two degrees in chemistry instead, and it's worked pretty well so far. But um, I still don't do the hair and nails, and I'm still not that great of a typer, so I apologize for that. So a zero is significant if it is between two non-zero digits. Oh, I see. This wrapped around. If it has non-zero digits somewhere to its left and right, I see what happened. That was autocorrect for word. So what that means is if you have something like 306, this zero has a 3 to the left and a 6 to the right, and so it is a significant digit. Or if it has a non-zero digit somewhere to its left and right, that was wrapped around. Even if you have two of them together, if it's like, or three of them, if you, if you have 30,000 and six, all of these zeros have a non-zero digit somewhere to the left and somewhere to the right, so they are significant digits. A zero is never significant if it's to the left of all the non-zero digits. So if you have something here like James Bond, 007, these leading zeros are not significant. They're just holding places. Even if we have something like 0 0.000153, all of these zeros to the left of the non-zero digits are not significant zeros. Now, the last one is the tricky rule. A zero that is to the right of all other digits is significant if the number has the decimal point written in the number. Now, there's always a decimal point implied, and we know where it is, but it has to be written down on the paper for it to count as a significant zero. So what we're going to do now is look at some numbers and decide how these rules apply. <laughs>